Shammy fam. May the 4th be with you because I am filming this on May the 4th. And I hope you are enjoying The Mandalorian or whatever else you are watching. And now me, as I make something not Star Wars inspired, but just tasty inspired. I don't even know why I brought that up. But we have these delicious, look at them, look at them, look at them, look at them. Lightly, oh, lightly toasted everything bagels. I went down to the local bagel shop this morning. God bless NYC. Um, best bagels in the world. Got myself these everything bagels. They smell amazing. And we're going to make some breakfast bagel Korean burger things going on here. We're going to start with these. And they're like extra huge. I wonder if they just have extra dough since they're making less. I was kind of sad. I was like the only customer in there. Um, but they seem to be doing a lot of more deliveries. They're kind of on a college campus, so and college is no longer in session. But I'm starting here. This is just a like chive cream cheese, which we are going to adhere liberally. Because I like it. Because I like onions. Both sides now. In fact, here. Whoop. That's a little bit. Mm. I love an onion cream cheese. I love a lox cream cheese. You know, have you ever had a beet cream cheese where it's red? That's delicious. Speaking of red breakfast, one time I had a... Mm. I had an egg that had been poached in red wine. That was to die for and beautiful looking. Now on our base here, we are going to start stacking up a lot of flavors. And we are taking our cue from Guy here and going to Flavor Town. So a little bit of kimchi that's going to give us that stink, that pink stink. Since it is kind of pink, a little more red, but that doesn't rhyme. That's not as fun. A little pink crunchy stink, fermented, ooh, spicy goodness. Oh, oh, it's a hot. also good. Gotta love the kimchi. And then to keep up with our kind of base of tangy spicy flavors, I got some thinly sliced red onions in a baggie because they were left over from salad. And that's already looking amazing. Now we're gonna hit it with our beef patty here. Just beef burger patty with everything bagel seasoning on it. Continuing the breakfast trend. That's some goodness. That is some goodness right there. And get some bacon on top. And now we're actually, we're going three meats with this. Three meats, four proteins. Next up is pastrami lox. Cause you know, it's gonna be, this is Brooklyn style. Brooklyn meets soul. Get out here, pastrami lox. Oh my God, that's huge. Get the pastrami locks on here. Mm. And it's just cured salmon mm. with pastrami seasoning. That is honestly heaven. Look at how beautiful that is. Flaky, creamy. That's going to give us a ton of delicious flavor. Now on top of this, I'm just going to drizzle a little bit of this tzatziki sauce I have. Because why not mix a little bit of grease in here? Mm. Tangy, dilly, going to go super good with this, the lox. Classic combination. Okay guys, and we got one stop left on this train ride through Flavor Town, and it's a messy and juicy one. Sunny side up fried egg that's just going to cause a huge mess when we... Squish it down or bite into it. Oh, the, this one's already breaking. It's beautiful. Watch it. Oh, yeah. Drip for daddy. Let's go ahead and just give this one a... Oh, this one's a little bit creamier. I like it. Swirl it around. Oh, oh shit. Oh, 
that's messy and gorgeous and I don't know how it's gonna fit in my mouth. I've heard that before. Jesus. I knew these flavors were gonna to go together well, but. I didn't think about the size. Mm. Wow. The fatty creaminess of that yolk. The way that balances with the acidity of the onions and the kimchi. The creamy locks. Wow. And this was all inspired by a viewer comment. Somebody commented this morning that they wanted to uh, uh, see me try kimchi. They wondered if I liked it. Which, if you're a longtime fan, you know I love kimchi. We've done kimchi pizza recently. I always love like a kimchi hot dog. And one of my favorite sandwiches is actually like a hoagie roll, kimchi, sausage, and cheddar cheese. So simple, so delicious. Mm. This is taking the cake. It's one of my favorite burgers. Although it's going at top of the list for hardest and messiest to eat. I was so nervous this morning when I went down to the bagel place because I hadn't walked down there for a while so I didn't know if they were still like trying to stay open <laughs> and I had promised my wife everything bagel for breakfast I didn't know what I was going to do if I couldn't get it there. So I didn't want to get, you know, no offense, but like frozen grocery store bagel is not an option. Once you like lived in Brooklyn and got used to the fresh bagel made that morning, oh, there's no going back. But thank you so much, Essential Bagel Workers. And they haven't even jacked up their prices. These bagels are so big and so amazing. And I bought four, and I think it was like $4.75 or something. They charge like $1.15 per bagel, something like that. Mmm. Bagels are probably the best tasting, cheapest way to get calories I know of. I mean, dollar pizza slices sometimes can be good, but that's hit or miss. I did recently find out 
that, you know, the little sleeve of uh, chocolate, like donut gems, as they're called. Those usually have 500 calories. And at one bodega near me, they only cost 75 cents. That's the cheapest way to get 500 calories. But they're only okay every once in a while. And then you're kind of sick of them. But I could eat bagels 10 days in a row. Especially since you can get different flavors. Okay, I'll just toast a bagel up and I enjoy it. Just with a little bit of butter or a lot of butter on it. I love a garlic bagel. I love an onion bagel. I love an everything bagel. I love a salt bagel if it's not too salty. And if it is, I just scrape some of the salt off and then I love it. I love locks on a bagel. There's a place that used to be open near me. It's now closed. But, um, they're like a bagel sandwich. Local chain, I think there are three or four of them around the city. And they had really good bagels. And they would do. The sandwich I always got was, I think, beet whipped or whipped beet cream cheese. So it was like fluffy, light cream cheese. It was red. It had a nice, light flavor of beets to it. Arugula. Locks. Locks. And then like a portion of omelet, you know, like fluffy egg. It was so good. And just beautiful, because think of all the different colors you have there. You have the the purple red beet, the green arugula, the white and yellow egg, the reddish lox. Man, that was a heaven sandwich. This is a heaven sandwich, too. That one was a bit more edible, though. And, um, at what, like, only like $13? Only $13 or something. I think it used to be 11 and then they raised the price. That's okay. I understand. A bit more affordable than what this would cost in a restaurant. God, I don't know. What would you charge for this? If they charge like 20 something to make it economical. <laughs> Let me know what you guys like on your bagels in the comments down below so I can get more ideas to steal. Actually, this is, you know, this is going a lot. This is trying very hard. I'm trying to impress you guys and impress my own taste palette. Taste palette? Taste buds. It does taste very good. But... I love me some ghetto, ghetto breakfast sandwiches, you know, classic bacon, egg, and cheese. And I'll take it down even another notch. Spam egg and cheese? Oh, yes. Oh, that's basically what, like what they do in New Jersey. What do they call it? A, uh, a Taylor roll, where what Taylor is like canned, a canned ham product, and you have that and egg, and cheese on like a roll. I think traditionally. I think there's some dispute over what you call it though. So sorry to people from different parts of New Jersey who call it different things. It's just a sandwich. Now this, even though it's not on a roll, to go by the same naming convention, I think you would call it a messy roll. And that is a Brooklyn street name joke that none of you probably got. I 
I, I should start a restaurant on Messy Roll Street in a dream world where that would actually be a good idea. I could start a restaurant called Messy Roll on Messy Roll. And every sandwich would be difficult to eat. And instead of, instead of napkins, we would have, um, like, bath cloths, you know, like little square washcloths that after every meal we get laundered. So we have a bunch of them, so people always had fresh ones. To be more environmentally friendly. <laughs> the problem would be we'd have to like build it with there not be able to be any like crack spaces in between booths and chairs because there'd be little kids like spilling cheese sauce everywhere and like once it gets into a chair or like under the seat cushion or something like there's no getting it out and that's just going to smell and attract bugs But this is an idea that can never happen. As did you. Restaurant industry, rest in peace. You will be missed. And even when things come back, I don't think significant investment will be directed in that direction as it's too risky. Though what I would like to see as a response to this is an increase in upscale food trucks. Food trucks don't have the same overhead costs. I mean, they have their own set of overhead costs, but real estate is not really one of them. And there's no pain for a space you can't use during a time like right now. You can always serve people out of a truck. I saw yesterday, it was the like first day in the 70s in Brooklyn over the weekend, and um, there were ice cream trucks everywhere. And that's great. I like the cheap chemical taste of a Mr. Softy... Uh, milkshake there's something pleasant about that somehow but i could do with more like spaghetti trucks fettuccine trucks i mean ellie's got lots of taco trucks we have some too as well but they aren't driving around my neighborhood playing mexican music so i come running down the stairs to go get some i would though I think that might have actually been my wife's idea. I think she said that she wanted a taco truck to come by and do that. <laughs> Korean truck. I mean, we have all these things in kind of like... Food trucks that go park places. Food trucks or um, food trailers, you know, that are pulled around by minivans and set up in like office districts. But now more people are gonna be working from home even after things are quote back to normal. And those food outlets are gonna to have to adapt. And by adapt, I mean, come to my neighborhood and give me uh, pork buns. Just publish your schedule on your Twitter of where you're going. 
and the city needs to facilitate a, a quicker onboarding process for licensing food trucks because I know that is a problem right now. And determining where they are allowed to park. And let's set this up. Let's say, you know, do some kind of thing like certain areas qualify for one to two per block. Certain areas qualify for one every two blocks, you know, depending on the density and demand within the neighborhood. Get people jobs. Oh my god, this is pushing everything down through my body. It's so heavy. And get me more interesting food without there having to be significant investment in real estate and restaurant build out. <laughs> this wasn't overly salty. I didn't really salt the burgers. And I use low sodium bacon. And pastrami seasoning doesn't seem to have a lot of salt in it. And I'm very glad that all together it was like the perfect amount of salt. With the everything bagel and the everything seasoning having a little bit of salt. Oh my. I hit my value. Both of those were almost half. I need to go sleep. I hope you guys like this idea. Try some pastrami locks, it's amazing. Put some kimchi on your burger, then put your burger on a everything bagel, then add locks, then bacon and uh, egg. Oh my god. Go all out. Let me know you're all out. Bagel breakfast ideas. Ooh. Or dinner ideas or lunch ideas. I'm too sleepy to talk now. Goodbye, guys. I love you.